so that's the reason we will be mainly focusing on cloud foundry and for that reason we wanted to understand the detailed architecture of cloud foundry as well and if you want to ignore just ignore it okay if you are saying i am a developer i don't care the architecture just ignore it but if you want to become a architect you want to become a lead you want to become a decision maker you want to become a good architect you definitely have to learn this and not only that if you want to develop good development skill within yourself you have to learn this and it's not a kind of like you have to learn now itself gradually you will be learning this kind of this architecture particularly because everywhere whenever we are dealing with any kind of application as we are saying we will be putting our application in cloud foundry how application will be deployed how application will be staged how application will be running okay how application will be served to the end customers or sorry end users everything you can see it if you want okay so that will be visible to you so for that purpose if you want you just uh, shut your brain or if you want you just open and put very much concentration here okay so here uh, i have different different layers this is a 3d format you will not find these things anywhere else okay so here i have mainly four layers or mainly five layers i would say we have this layer as well so what are those layers so the layers are routing so this is a, this is the routing and authentication layer okay and the second layer is the second layer is application life cycle okay and the third layer is application store and execution whenever i am i'm taking some time writing these things in between you just look deeply here whoever want okay and the fourth layer is here is this services services layer and fifth layer is messaging this layer this particular layer messaging and logging okay so we have this mainly five layers now we will try to understand with some use case use case in the sense like okay so architecture means like how it works when the application get deployed and how it works when a end user request for application or execute on application we will be seeing these two main perspective first look into the developer perspective when developer develop any code don't worry about this terminology will whatever i am i am giving you the information here everything is linked okay so everything is linked there after there after there after so if you scan see there are some new terminology coming in to picture intentionally i have put those things here gradually i will be revealing those things and i will be explaining more and more details don't worry about that i am taking you i am taking the full responsibility of your btp learning okay so don't worry so here so you can develop or you can write uh, application let's say like in business application studio let me take another color business application studio business application studio is somewhere you will be writing your code like if you have seen visual studio code or uh, let's say like this is your ac38 or ac37 okay where you will be writing your code and as i was say, saying you can write your code and you can deploy it using cf push your job is to write code and deploy it using cf push rest of the things whatever happened doesn't matter but matters from uh, other perspective i was saying so anyway so whenever you will be pushing the code it will go and set into this diogo cell vm how it will come here 
let me tell you so here we have the cloud controller kind of like gateway whichever the request the cloud foundry will get from your cf push it will get the request it will register the request and here you can see at different point of time we have different databases as well within this cloud foundry as i was saying it was open source technology but on top of that uh, they have already provided you different databases like this is one of the database this is one of the database this is one of the database okay so whenever any new request come for deployment it comes here and it register the things like which are the application the application name those kind of application id those kind of things okay and this cloud controller also controls the other things like the other btp things like the account sub account space okay don't worry about that but just remember the things remember the terminology account sub account space okay the user management the securities Okay, okay, the the roles, those kind of things also controlled by this cloud controller. So this is part of cloud foundry. And whenever the the CF push the request come for the deployment of application, it register here in this particular database of cloud foundry. And this particular database is built on top of MySQL, just for your information. And when it register the information, it goes to Diego Cell VM via uh, via this Diego Brain. via this cloud controller bridge okay so diogo brain diogo diogo brain will decide okay so diogo brain's job is to distribute the task and log running process to diogo cell okay diogo cell vm and whenever the deployed application will come to diogo cell vm vm is virtual machine so this particular virtual machine and garden container that you can see container virtual machine so these concepts comes long long back before the original invention of virtual machine or container okay i mean mainly the container not the virtual machine okay so like the docker before docker it came okay so the cloud foundry garden container came into picture so it is kind of a same containerization techniques like your application will be containerized different application will be containerized in different container For, from isolation perspective from flexibility perspective and in between there will be communications okay so anyway here whenever the application code will come in this diogo cell vm okay so as i was saying cloud controller accept request and direct to diogo brain via the cloud controller bridge to coordinate with individual diogo cell to store and run application so when it comes to diogo cell vm the first thing it does it like okay i need to now compile right and i need to stage the application right uh, and then i need to start the application right so you'll seeing those things whenever you will be actually building and deploying those applications in cloud foundry and to compile the application to stage the application i actually need so your application comes here but as because your application like application component like you have written a lot of things or you have a lot of files so diogo cell vm will not um, hold all of this right so let's say like you are uh, you are inheriting different packages okay so packages in the sense like okay so whenever we also develop something like we also do not um, build from the scratch like we used to use some kind of packages libraries right so those libraries definitely it will not store within this diogo cell vm the reason is those packages libraries and the code bundles are heavy are very heavy right so it will consume lots of memory okay so for that purpose this cloud foundry uses some kind of application store okay like in blob store or s3 okay so aws blob store or s3 amazon s3 so this is the icon of amazon s3 i just put for your reference purpose so whenever the the things will come here it will deploy it here itself like and uh, it will it will actually map whichever the packages whichever the libraries i need okay 
and as because i was telling you everywhere i need the database i have the database so whenever it comes here it registers the information here okay so these are this is the application these are the required packages i need and that's how it will map okay so now i have the baseline things here and for the running this baseline code i need this kind of libraries packages but i will not use or store those libraries packages here i will store it in blob storage here itself in the separately and not only that i need different kind of build pack like i was mentioning you here like i was mentioning you somewhere 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 here like to run a java application i need jvm for node js application i need v8 engine for python application i need python right so those kind of sorry 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 yeah so for those kind of things i need some kind of build packs like java build pack node js build pack python build pack those are also heavy files those are also i will not put i mean the cloud foundry uh, will not put in diego cell vm those also put into the some kind of blob storage the library packages the build packs will be put into the blob storage and to run any application i need some kind of so here in this cloud foundry terminology this is droplet okay so application will become a droplet okay so it is kind of like end format to serve for your final end user okay so this is kind of like end uh, shape of your application it will become a droplet okay it will package like a droplet so to build this droplet like the tar file mtar file okay so this particular droplet need this packages and build pack so with using this packages and build build pack it will uh, this droplet will be built okay and the reference of the droplet will come here and store in the database as well okay and whenever it needs to serve to the end user it sits here in this garden container so garden container you can imagine as of now like it's kind of a uh, serving container to the end user okay where where the end users will be connecting to your services to your garden containers applications through some service broker okay so this are internal mechanism if you don't bother don't care okay about it but as i said like to become a good architect you have to care so on top of that we have <clears throat> the services okay like the different services like uh, so so to build application like you have to you may need to connect to your back end system on premise system right you may need uh, the the connectivity service you may need to connect, need the connectivity service you may need the destination service right you may need logging service you may need uh, application scaling service you may need job scheduling service right you may need alert notification service right you may need transport management service to transport your request right so these are the different services which can connect to your actual application with using this service broker and not only that many times you will be connecting your application not only your let's say like your on premise application on premise system but also some saas solution right like success factor ariba conquer fill class or even espana cloud so for that also so this is saas solution as we have already mentioned so also connecting to your actual application deployed application using this service broker and not only that even if you want to connect to your databases like hana database mysql postgre anything you have to go through this service brokers so these are the service layer so we have seen the perspective when the application get deployed how it compiles how it gets uh, uh, get started how it's how it, how it stage the application okay and how it's connects to the outsider world outside the services and databases so let's move ahead to the another perspective like this perspective this was the perspective number 1 and this is the perspective number 2 okay so from the end user perspective now let's say like the end user wants to access the application what is the mechanism will happen inside this cloud foundry let's understand so whenever we used to access any kind of cloud application we need to authenticate ourselves like we are legitimate user right 
we need to give our credentials and in the the server the platform will verify we are a valid user so in cloud foundry itself we have this access uaa service or access ua techniques the uaa user authentication and authorization sorry user account and authorization this is the particular service will be responsible for user authentication and authorization and after successfully login we need to route it to the appropriate application through this router okay and when router routes the the request of the request of the user uh, it goes via this cloud controller again because cloud controller have all this information here in this database right and because cloud controller all have all this information in this database like <coughs> which is the vm or which is the actual um, application ids i need to actually hit okay when the user requesting for application and it goes via the cloud controller and it goes via some part of diogo brain and it goes via this via this bbs this is bulletin board system so what is this bulletin board system let me tell you one more thing so whenever we will be deploying any application in cloud foundry it is not something like okay so forever your application will run right let's say like your system user the application user your end user is growing your business users are growing your business data are growing there are high chances that you need to scale your application okay we will be seeing those scaling part all those details don't worry about anything okay i generally think just just remember okay i generally think whatever the way you might have, might be thinking okay so if any questions are coming maybe you can ask but every answers you will get during the session at the end of the session or at the end of the training so don't worry anyway so whenever uh, as i was saying so there will be scaling requirement okay that means like okay let's say like there are applications we need to scale like and the same application becomes multiple instance okay like this so when to hit particular instance right based on the workload right so whenever user is requesting these things from this router it goes via the cloud controller and it should hit right kind of instances so that the load balancing will happen right so that the and and the and the um, application should be available all the time okay uh, from the scalable uh, perspective right so all those information like okay so which instance needs to be hit for different instances uh, application those information will uh, comes here and it will work together with nsic and silrip so bulletin board system constantly gives the information which instance is free to serve which instance is available to serve constantly it gives the information to cloud controller so that cloud controller gives the right kind of information to the router and user gets the right kind of in uh, information like user don't want to wait okay user if you are you are searching for a application right let's say like you are searching facebook.com you don't want to uh, wait for one minute right it should automatically come whenever you search, you just type facebook.com enter it should come within fraction of second it should not wait right so the responsibility of bulletin board system is that only okay so then i think like the the request will come here and it will serve through this garden container the the final compilation will happen in the garden container and it will serve to the end user whenever you need the you need any kind of other services it connects to the other services and it you it will serve to the end user so these are the main two perspective i hope you got some idea if you are not just uh, just repeat this recording multiple time and try to understand each and every word that i said here okay and uh, maybe you will be having better idea okay enough talk let's move ahead to the next section maybe i will give very quick break okay for one or two minute if you have any questions before moving to the next section uh parsha so i am